Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is the Big Game Previews show. We've got college football, and then we'll move into the NFL. We're going to talk about the biggest games of the weekend. But first, go play that sweet music. <laughs> we should pick a different different fight song to play after, after Saturday. That is the Florida State Band, and they did not look like they were having fun playing those instruments at the end of that game. I will tell you that. The show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us at winningcureseverything.com. All of our social media, all of our podcast feeds, YouTube, etc. Go check it out for yourself. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Leave some comments. We love to hear from you guys. Uh, I got to tell you. We had that one guy from East Carolina that was blowing us up, and he has completely disappeared. Yeah, I asked. I, I put out an APB to somebody check on that guy. That's a, he. He look. I'm not trying to talk trash about a man, but well, but if you're going to talk trash, when just you're expect that, it. I, I don't Matt. care. I'm not worried about that. Nah, he he got saying. he got it on Saturday, and it's okay. Yeah. But but just it's a game, and I just want to make sure you're all right. I care. We do care. I all care. Of you guys that are I don't in the YouTube listen. comments. I'm a little bit selfless. Selfish? I don't. <laughs> selfish? Not selfless. That's never. I've never been called that. Uh, I, I. I don't want to lose a viewer. I don't no. want to lose a subscriber. Of course not. Come on, man. Come no. on. No, that's the way it goes. Sorry. Uh, on the picks show, we're going to have a special guest this week and every week from here on. Uh, we're going to have T.J. Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast jump in with us for the college football segment and the NFL picks segment. So make sure you check that out on the next show. Let's go ahead and talk about college football. First off, again, if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Leave some comments. Even if you talk trash, we're fine with it. It's all good. We will look for you if you go disappearing. Okay? Just letting you know. We care. If you're listening on the podcast, hit subscribe. Leave a nice five-star review. That helps out way more than you guys know. We do appreciate the support. College football big game preview time. Let's jump into it. You ready? Yep. This is this is your boys. Well, this is a big game. We got two, this is your two mega games. One real big game should be close. Should be a good game. We are recording on what Tuesday night? I almost said Thursday. Tuesday night. It's this almost, week has been, it's almost Thursday. This week has been super strange because of Labor Day. Late. You know, really, really weird. LSU minus six at Texas. This line was Texas minus one just last week. Yeah, but that and was that was flips. before we saw both these teams play. Opening lines always jump and change. I know you can't like. I know I by know. week I'm four you saying. can't see what week four's line was. So I know, I know. It opened at four and a half. Yes, it opened at four and, and then a half. And it has been moved to six, but it hasn't been bet up to six. Yeah, you you had pulled up. I pulled up the betting numbers, and it is LSU. What, 50? 50, 58, it was 57% of the bets are on LSU. That's, Which ain't that much. That's not enough to move a line. No. No, sure not. Sure not. Total is 55 and a half. That's a lot of line movement for not yeah, a whole lot of money to move. It, it's it's something weird. It's it's making people want to take Texas, I think. Yeah, last week Vegas talked me into a bet and yeah. I lost my ass. That's uh, That's what happens, though. It's all good. Uh, 55 and a half for the total. 6.30 p.m. on ABC Saturday night. It's at Royal Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. LSU last week against Georgia Southern. 30 out of 39 passing for 350 yards, five touchdowns. Texas last week gave up 340 yards passing to Louisiana Tech. Do we see a mismatch here? No. Is it possible that Texas's pass defense is going to be outworked by LSU's passing game? I don't know. I, I, you know how I feel about big schools beating up on little schools, and I just think you could take all those numbers and throw them away. Yeah. I, I don't know that you can. All the metrics after week one says that LSU has a massive favorite. Oh, yeah. Massive, even bigger than this number. I, I, don't, I, I just don't think you can get that from that. 
Texas is going to come out. They're going to be fired up. They're going to want to play. LSU's going to be fired up. Both teams talking trash. Texas trying to take the DBU thing. I don't know how many DBs they've put in the NFL, but we got a couple I mean, got guys. A few. We got a couple guys that are going to get some gold jackets. So you know that's fine. We got a couple <laughs> guys that already got gold jackets. That's okay. Um, but but it's fun and but it's going to be a big game. All right. I I don't know that we're going to see a matchup where two quarterbacks are as close. Now Sam Ellinger, I think, is nobody's going to argue. He is a better athlete than Joe Burrow, but but this is it, about does, as. Does even, that make him a better leader? I don't know. No, 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 no. I don't no. think so. No, and I'm not saying he's not a good leader. I'm just saying I, I. No, that doesn't make him. But I'm just saying I. I think this is about as close of an evenly killed matchup, all levels of the football that we're gonna get. The fact that we got this game. If it's a blowout, a, one way or the other, I will be shocked as hell. I just don't see it. I, I'm glad that we got this matchup. What is it? Two and a half, three seasons, whatever. It, or I guess it's just, just, it's just two, two seasons. It's just two. After the Thanksgiving night debacle, where it was reported that Tom Herman was taking the LSU job, and then he passed on it, yeah. and rather than be shown up, the LSU AD at the time yeah. decided it would be a good idea to hire Ed Orgeron at 7 a.m. on Saturday. Saturday morning, right after the game, like talk about an emotional decision. But it has worked out. No, it's LSU worked out. LSU appears it's, to it's be. A, I, I've never had a problem with the hire. I always have a problem with the process. Yes. And and that's a very ticky tack thing. It just means that if Ed ever leaves for whatever reason, if we don't have some sort of plan for how we're going to hire coaches, you can't always just fall out of bed and get lucky. Yes. It's just not how this game works. I'm an administrator. I've been an administrator for a while. If you do something without a plan and it works, it doesn't mean anything. No. It, it literally means nothing to me. So that's that's my problem with that. I Tough. love where we're at. I love where both schools are. They're both getting, getting back to where they should be, yes. which is in the top 10 of college football, in all-time relevance of college football, and in big games. Tom Herman, as a coach, 13-2-1 all-time against the spread as an underdog. That includes 8-2-1 at Texas. Do you think maybe they're doing him a favor making him an underdog here? I don't know if they're doing him a favor. You know. I mean, obviously, they're not doing it for him. That's right. But this, I mean, it, Herman has a way of firing his boys up when they are if, behind the numbers. If you need extra help getting fired up because you're a dog in a game like this, then shame the hell on you. Agreed. That's I just if LSU's not fired up in this game because they're favored, then everybody needs to be fired. We uh we I just to, don't I don't think any of that stuff matters. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. Uh, but you know me. I don't I don't care about trends. I don't care about what's happened in the last decade or twenty years in a because none of those kids are there today. None of those guys are gonna line up and, and, and put their hand in the dirt on Saturday. None of them. True. True. That's why none of that crap matters to me. Let's go ahead and make some picks. You know who I'm rolling with. I know. And it ain't because I don't like LSU. I think LSU is immensely talented. You're just going to always take the safe bet. That's what you do. I I like the the against the spread thing here. You take safe. And Texas being at home, I think they've been circling this game for a long time. I'm rolling with Texas not only straight up, or not only against the spread, I'm rolling straight up. That's good. And you're you're going the opposite way. I'm going with my Tigers. I think I do think it's going to be a close football game. I don't think anything's going to be a blowout, but I think I think a touchdown game doesn't doesn't change much. I think yeah, you're right. So let's move on. The Texas A&M Aggies at the Clemson Tigers. This is a, a 17 and a half point spread in favor of Clemson. 2:30 p.m. on ABC. The total. 64 and a half. A lot of points for a game like this. Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. You got a you got a battle of quarterbacks. You got a battle of coaches, two national championship winning coaches. We won't, Dabo and we won't get many opportunities for two national and, championship coaches. And this is like the all name bowl. That's right? right. Jimbo and Dabo and Kellen and Trevor. Like I'm I'm all in on this. Uh how do, how do you feel about this game? I, I know you love Texas A&M and, and what they're doing under Jimbo Fisher. That's right. Um, 
man, you know, metrics really seem to like Clemson here, and yet that number keeps going down. The metrics, it, like it opened at 19 and a half, right? That's right. Opened so at 19 and a half. We're down to 17 Down to and 17 half. and a half. Metrics have got this at Clemson by over three touchdowns. So I, that's that's fine. I like A&M, I, but we know I like them a lot. I've, I've talked about that. I, I'm not thinking that A&M is going to win this game. I know A&M believes that, and I'm glad they do, because if you go into the game and you don't think you got a chance to win, then you shouldn't be playing in it. But, um, I mean, it, would it shock me if A&M pulled off a massive upset here? I, I don't know that I would be super surprised. No. I think they're a really good football team. They're coached by a professional coach that knows what he's doing. Yes. And and he's building this program up. I also think I think it hurts Clemson that they don't get tested week in and week out. And not that we're far enough into the season for that to matter. They they look bored against Georgia Tech. They yeah. didn't look impressive against Georgia Tech, but I don't think that's because they're slipping or they're not going to be as good this year. I just think they're not into it. Yeah, they just... They got to get into this game. And if they don't get into this game, there's no game on their schedule for them to get into. This is the biggest and best team they're going to play all year. And that that would make you think that maybe they would come out and win this one by three touchdowns, right? Uh, I'm curious... I I think the other team's going to have something to say about that. Agreed. Are they going to want to come out and win this game by three touchdowns? Sure. Of course. Absolutely. But, but, But... but I think I, I think, just think the other team is good enough to square up with them and give them. They gave them their best shot last year. People say, "Oh, well, Kelly Bryant, coach." No, that, Trevor Lawrence was in that game too, and Trevor Lawrence got benched in that game. Okay. Yeah. No, he I got, think I think that's the pulled. biggest matchup. Not in because this, he got hurt. He got pulled. That's the biggest matchup in this entire game is Mike Elko's defense yep. against Trevor Lawrence, and they they kind of embarrassed him last year. That's right. And I think that they could do it again. Ooh. Like, you think they can embarrass Trevor Lawrence? I, I think so. Holy I think they could make crap. him they can make him look really bad. I, Mike Elko I, I does I that. I won't be upset if that happens. Mike Elko does that to to quarterbacks all the time. Well let's while we're talking about them, let's just see if I can find that. You keep going. You keep breaking the game down real quick. <laughs> uh Travis Etienne, it, if if Trevor Lawrence begins to have problems. I think that that is because of the defensive line issues, and there's not really that many issues per se with Texas A&M, but if Trevor Lawrence starts to have issues throwing the football, he can't really, that will be his safe haven. That will be who he runs to. Travis Etienne can catch the ball out of the backfield. He is as explosive as it gets. It, there's there's two super explosive players in college football. It is Etienne and Jerry Judy. And and Etienne might be 1A as opposed to 1B on this. Like, those two guys are unbelievable. A&M's defensive line got really, really young guys. I'm curious to see what they're going to do. Obviously, I think they're going to bring linebacker pressure, edge rushers like crazy to try and get to Lawrence. If they are able to get to Lawrence, you better look out for the screen game because I think these A&M defenders are young enough that they will overplay. Yeah, that, they, I mean, that's what's going to hurt the defense is the fact that I think they're athletic. I think they can play with anybody. The problem is, is they are young. Yes. And and you're, that's that's it, is they're going to be susceptible to um, not maintaining the edge and over uh, advancing up the line of scrimmage when when plays get, get by them or behind them. Yeah. And, and now you're chasing these crazy athletic guys from Clemson from behind. And, now, on the, and, and on the other side... Now, uh, you brought up the, you think they have a chance in this game. You think that they might be pulling some kind of upset or whatever. They can, listen, if the defense embarrasses Trevor Lawrence, which said, then A&M's going to win this game. That's, okay. that's the truth. Okay. Well, uh, what kind of money line are we talking about? Plus, six, that's what you plus 625. I, listen, you just you sprinkle a little bit. It don't cost you anything. I mean, it's, it's basically just money you're throwing away. Yeah. But I mean, I'm gonna piss that money away going to Sonic when this thing's over with. <laughs> so you know, don't get that extra shake and there you go. Put a little bit on this and got a like you know a nice payday. I for for our big game picks, I'm rolling A and M plus the 17 and a half because I do think that this will end up being a close game. I Clemson's at home. I think this is their only big game. They will be focused. 
Uh, the talent is comparable. Clemson has a little more, but I like Clemson at home here. I think Clemson wins the game straight up, uh, but I like A&M to cover. Yeah, I, I like A&M to cover. I like them to keep it close. Um, been wrong before. Look, if if somebody's going to embarrass somebody, it, it could ev- it could easily be Brett Venables embarrassing Kellen Kel- Kel- Mond. Uh, no, 100%. I, I don't, don't want to see that. I'm a, I'm I'm I've bought into Jimbo. I've bought into Mond. I've bought into this A&M team, but. If there's a man capable of embarrassing somebody, it's, it's Mr. Venables. Speaking of embarrassing, Syracuse's shellacking a few freezes, Liberty uh, Flames last week was slightly embarrassing for the man in the hospital bed. Syracuse at Maryland. Maryland is a two and a half point favorite now. This line opened up at Syracuse minus two and a half, right? Or minus it, three, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now has flipped five and a half points. The total is 57. It is 11 a.m. on ESPN from Maryland Stadium in College Park, Maryland. Scott Van Pelt's boys, the Terps, man, they, they looked like they were on fire under Mike Loxley in week one. And I know you're rolling your eyes here, but pick, 79 pick, to nothing. Picking on a helpless, defenseless kid. It's against Cam Newton's little brother. Why would you do a man like that? Well, I'll tell you why, because you're not going to be able to do that in this game, I don't think. Uh, Josh Jackson looked really, really good after transferring from Virginia Tech. Did you hear the reason they ran it up to 79? I have no idea. There is an internet, now I don't think, nobody from nobody from Maryland has said this, but there is internet philosophies that, uh, and I, God, I shouldn't ever forget his name based on what happened. The, the young man that died, it, he, he wore 79 and they said they wanted to get it to that. And I think that's some bunk. I think you brought works. Howard in and you beat yeah. the hell out of him. Like it, I don't, I don't think that's it. I Congratulations, that's it. Loxley. Hope, so, hope, hope that was nice. But it hope did, it, it did get the public on his side big time. And cheers to Loxley because I'm telling you, with his record at New Mexico, man, that was the fact that he's got another head coaching job is just remarkable. Like the the Nick Saban rehab job is is wonderful. Um, they've, Syracuse, they've moved that line, and there is still sixty-seven percent of the people on Maryland. Yeah, see, that's just that's and that's, af- that's after up, that's after line movement. They put up a massive number. You think Syracuse just like, by not beating Liberty that bad? They beat, they beat them twenty-four to nothing. So people think, oh, well, Dino Babers has a little bit more class. Yes, I think he does. I don't know these two individuals. I'm just working under that assumption. I also believe... I also like one of them a lot. I, I believe that Dino Babers has got a hell of a football team. Yes. And the fact that so many people are underselling this bunch... Look, this was not supposed to be a big game on this schedule, right? Not not for Syracuse and Maryland. They, obviously, right. every game's big. But just as far as... Just as far as, like, a big matchup that matters... Well... Now, this one matters. Like, this is a big deal. Dino has been here before. I, you want to talk about offensive gurus? Dino Babers is the guy. Tommy DeVito didn't look great last week. He did enough to get through. They didn't do anything to run up the score. They didn't do anything. You know, it, it was it was interesting. And they put a goose egg on yep. Liberty, who averaged, nothing. you know, 35 points a game last year. A really good offense that brought a lot of kids back. Yes. In a in a offensive genius, regardless of the fact that he's in the hospital. Bed. He he didn't coach this game at all. So either way, uh, yeah, but it, it was his game plan. It was his. I mean, you get the point. I I don't. Either way, I don't. Either way, <laughs> they had Buckshot Calvert, man. I think Hugh Freeze. How dare you disgrace? The I name think of Hugh Buckshot. Freeze was there because Hugh Freeze likes to see himself on TV. I believe that. That's that's why I think Hugh Freeze I, I was 100% there. Hundred percent believe that. Hundred percent believe that. I am rolling with Syracuse. Not only to cover the spread, but to also win the game outright because I am not buying Maryland yet. I got to look. I'm sure the money line is nothing. Yeah. Oh, it's like so, plus 115. Plus, yeah, plus 110. Yeah, don't, plus don't, even, don't even get that. Yeah. That's, I'm, 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 I'm all over that. No, I'm the same way. I'm, I'm Syracuse. I'm Syracuse. Big, big, big. 
I don't know about big. I love Dino Babers. I don't know about that third I, big there. I, 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 yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay <laughs> like, with that. Screw I'm going to tell you this. Only... Maryland won't score half of what they scored last week. Oh, good. Half of what they scored last week was 40. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, I you got to roll with I it. I stand by my statement. You got to roll with it. All right, all right. Next game up, game number four on the big game previews before we get into the interesting matchups after game five. Game number four is Nebraska. Minus three and a half point favorite at Colorado. The total is 64 and a half. It's at 2.30 p.m. on Fox. So for all the people that have multiple screens set up, because the majority of the country will be watching Clemson, Texas A&M, Nebraska, Colorado will be on Fox at Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado. Look, this is going to be an interesting game. That's exactly why I've got it on this list. Scott Frost uh, looked, eh, in week one. Uh, the people expected them to come out and destroy South Alabama. I felt so much better about all my Nebraska future on this. Oh, yeah. They did not even score as many points as the spread was. Yes. That's scary. They didn't equal the spread number in points. Yes. Much less beat somebody by that number. Now, Mel Tucker, with Colorado, you and I sat at the sports book on sure. Friday night and watched Mel Tucker put up some points. Nebraska scored, what was it, 35? Put up uh, yeah, 35 like points. That. Colorado hung 52. 52 for the Buffs. You think both those defenses were comparable? I would say South, so. South Alabama better than Colorado State? Uh, about the same. I think South Alabama's probably got some bigger boys. I think South Alabama's defense is better. Not that it not that it changes my opinion of yeah, things. Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it's that big of a but, deal. But but yeah, South Alabama better. Is that weird? South Alabama better Who, than Colorado State? Who's got State? a better defense? Nebraska or South Alabama? Like Oh no. That's a different conversation. That's that's what I'm saying. Okay. Look. LaVisca Chenault. And Mr. Montez. Hey, you told me. You told me I while told we're you, sitting there. Now, I thought maybe you had a few too many pops in you, and you were just no. talking crazy. No, I'd been drinking coffee by that point. You said it's this kid was the, the best athlete in all of college football. Yeah. Was I wrong? Well, I don't know. We're one week in, and he beat the hell out of a really <laughs> but, bad look, team. He, he played half the year last year. In the games that he was in, they were undefeated, and... And then he, they he's, lose him. He's and an he's athlete. Gone. That is a bold statement, my friend. Hey, I don't care how bold it is. It, it ain't bold if it's true. You you did tell me about this time last year that Josh Allen was the best athlete in last year's team uh, in, in oh, yeah. football last year. I mean, a hundred percent. And I was dead on, dead on. Josh Allen from Kentucky, not Wyoming. Don't get it twisted. Well, he All wasn't right. there last year. He was with the Bills already. I know, but I'm just saying that for people that are watching that are trying to get Nobody would out. configure one of those guys being the best athlete in all of college football. I, I would hope not, but either way, just, just toss it out there. If, so Josh Allen from Kentucky, best athlete last year. LaVisca Chenault, best athlete this year from Colorado. Will he get any luck? Because he plays at least the right side of the ball. he get any kind of Heisman love at all. They went on Saturday. What if... Nebraska fans are about to get really mad. I don't mean to make you mad. What if Nebraska has like six, seven losses? I mean, what if what if they have? No, no, no. they they can't. They don't just make a bowl game Saturday. Okay, like it's it. You can't be like if a, this is a big win for Colorado, but then later we look back and say, oh, that really wasn't that big of a win. Does well, it no, change no, no. things? It's, it, this it, it is important because it is this week. That's right. right. You, you gotta win. You have to win this right. to get to the next level. I got you. It, they got to win this week, okay? And then, and then, yeah, he'll start to get some national love. Like okay. he, he already has some, right? There are some believers in his camp right now, but well, now our it's boy, just not really loud. Our boy Clay Travis says all the time, "You never like the Heisman favorite." No, and he fully believes that never, never is the guy who's predicted to be the favorite. He never wins. It's always no, somebody who comes does. from behind that nobody suspected at the beginning of the year. That's why I thought. Okay, when you said that, I'm 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 thinking, does well, he even have a chance to get invited? No, because he he plays it like I love Colorado. Don't get me wrong, I love Nebraska too. Like I ain't, there ain't nothing wrong. So with where it, he y'all. plays hurts. But yes, I think it absolutely hurts. One, he's in the Pac-12, so you're not going to see him a bunch. This is a prime spot for That's him. Right. Oh no, he needs it, to show out on TV on yeah, national TV. If he starts. 
putting up some major league numbers in this game against Scott Frost, and they end up pulling out a win, and it's just highlight reel after highlight reel, 100%. He's got a shot. He's got a shot. Okay. So, and it, look, we just got to make sure Mr. Montez gets him the ball. That, that is the other problem. He doesn't play the position that gets the Heisman anymore. Now, on the other side, Adrian Martinez didn't look great last week, but last year, I mean, he put up some major league numbers. I think maybe they took that first game a little lightly. If if they come out swinging, like they got the players to be able to to kind of run yeah. away with this. If Scott, so we didn't talk about Nebraska enough, other than kind of crapping on them. That that's shame on us. We we actually didn't do that. If Scott Frost is the coach that we think he is, legit, real, yes. excellent head coach, they'll they'll be much improved. The team that we see play this game won't be the team that we saw play last game. Correct? Agree. We agree with that. I agree. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you make a pick first. How are you feeling? I'm going to take the points. I'm going to take the home dog. All right, so you're taking Colorado plus three and a half. I don't, I don't love it. We pick all the big games. These are not gambling picks. Um, you're taking them straight up? Going to my head, I'm going to take Colorado. No, um, I'd like to see it because I got a lot of I got a lot of Nebraska under. Yeah, eight and a half. I'd sure like to see it. All right, so you're rolling Nebraska to win, though, right? You're thinking it. I don't know. Are we doing that for the big games? Yes, for the big games. You're picking a straight up winner and a picks winner. I don't I wasn't, spread. Winner. I wasn't emotionally prepared for this. All right, it, I'll give you Colorado. Let me go with the home team. I'll go with the home team. All right, you just okay. It's a small enough spread. All right, here's what I'm going to do. That's not a crazy bet. I'm going to take the over. I'm just. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm about to hit you. I, right. I never know what uh, the hell we're doing on these things. <laughs> Show up. We're doing different shit. All right, I'm, I'm going to roll Nebraska minus the three and a half. If if only, like it, my. My gut tells me Nebraska. My yeah. mind is telling me, like, man, Colorado looked really good. Yeah. You know, I, I think Nebraska maybe bounces back. Picking Colorado week. to win the game might be overreaction from week one. I'm admitting to that. I, under- it, I understand the public saw both of these two teams, and the public is all saying, oh, man, that Colorado team looked a hell of a lot better than the Nebraska team. Yeah. That's not what you're going to get this week. Those two teams are going to be different. Yeah. Is different. Good enough to change the outcome of what I think. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, let's close up with this one before we get into the interesting matchups here. Game number five in the big game previews at Cincinnati at Ohio State. Ohio State minus 16 and a half. Favorite juice is minus 110 on that one. 55 and a half is the total. 11 a.m. on ABC from Ohio Stadium in Columbus. Uh, you love... Cincinnati and Luke Fickle, don't you? I do love Cincinnati and Luke Fickle. I do think that Ryan Day and that bunch could keep this closer for Luke Fickle, right? Like, I think they would win by a couple of touchdowns. They call the dogs? I, I think. Here's the problem with that. A couple of touchdowns isn't enough unless there's like a minute and a half left. You can't call the dogs because Cincinnati's not going to call the dogs. They're going to keep continuing to try to win the game until it says all zeros. That's just going to happen. If you call the dogs, you get caught. Yeah, but I think... You the, get beat. I think Ohio State is is. You think they're much that better. much better to where they could name their score? Yeah, I kind of do. Wow. I think that is just ha- massive disrespect. That's a, hey, this is Bearcats. not disrespect. This is I the know what a talent is. Talent is. The t- the talent gap between these two is worlds apart. Ohio State, as far as that blue chip, uh, uh, whatever it's called, the blue chip gap that I was talking about. Sure. The ranking of what these kids were like in high school. I yes. gotcha. Ohio State is number one in the country. Number one over, in over the country. Alabama, in the world. Over Georgia. Nobody on the Clemson. planet <laughs> are as athletic as them. They got more five stars than everybody. I'm just saying it's in Ohio Stadium. It is game number two. Justin Fields, we know now, can do something. Well, yeah, he's really good at football. Who would have thought that? How are you feeling about this? I'm going to take the points. I'm going to take, take all those win? points. I wrote down the money line. <laughs> 
It is, it is plus 550. Plus 550 is not enough for me. Well. For these guys. That's where we're different. I mean, that's... Different. It, I you just know what? I Luke Fickle going back to his old team? Sure. You're rolling Cincinnati to win. To win the game. To win the game. All right, I'll write it down. Write it down. I'll write it down. I'm, I'm going to take the opposite side of this. I'm going to go Ohio State minus 16 and a half. You're laying all those points. I'm laying all of them. I think Ohio State's talent is that much more superior to Cincinnati's. I don't argue that. I think Cincinnati played a dog crap team last week. What do you think Georgia State's talent is to Tennessee? Oh, nothing. What do you Garbage. think Wyoming's talent, Wyoming's talent, Wyoming? I was like, what is Wyoming? I don't know, I don't know where the hell Wyoming is. I've been to Wyoming on Tunica the other night. Wyoming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Wyoming's talent to Missouri was? Uh, probably more comparable than Tennessee's to Georgia State. Okay. It, it happens every week. Uh, yeah, but you're every talking week. about Missouri and Tennessee. You're not talking uh, about Ohio I, State. I fully understand that. But we're also talking Cincinnati, Cincinnati compared to... Compared to... Okay, okay, I'm with you. Cincinnati is, is light years better than those other teams. I mean, just... World's better than those other. Teams. I will tell you this: if they get, if they find a way to make Justin Fields uncomfortable, oh, this it, defense is gonna make him uncomfortable. It could be a very this long defense is gonna make him uncomfortable. They're gonna know he's there. I'm, I'm curious because you haven't seen him in any real adversity yet, right? Well, he's gonna feel adversity. They might win this game by four touchdowns, but Justin Fields is going to feel adversity. Yes. He is going to get hit, and he's going to get harder than he's been hit in a long, long time. Yeah, I agree. this is a tough ass team. You remember that Temple team years ago with with my boy Matt Rule? Yes. Yeah. Like that's the way I think Cincinnati is right now. Just they are just tough as nails, man. I think I agree with you. I do. I don't. I don't know. I do think Ohio the State fact is, that they, is that much better. Calling them to win this game is is a little ridiculous. But it's why I like betting big underdogs because sometimes it'll hit. You because I, I I need it to hit once. And if it hit once, it buys me 10 times of not hitting. More than that, 55 times of not hitting. That's true. That's true. I remember you were the one that had the money line on Iowa over Ohio you, State. You damn right. However long ago that was. What were they, 20-something point underdogs? 22-point yeah. underdogs? Yeah, it was and over three touchdowns. 24? And it was, yeah, it was like a plus 1,200. I mean, it was something I mean, crazy it, money line. Yeah, and, and it hit. And uh, I mean, you, were in the, you were in the black for a long time. Porky picking it that night. Believe it. All right, let's talk about the most interesting matchups. Start off with West Virginia at Missouri. Missouri, a 14-point favorite. Missouri looked awful. Awful last week. Now, the offense did some good things. Uh, West Virginia played a really good FCS team yeah. in James Madison. Won 20-13. Austin Kendall was great. Yep. Uh, had two touchdowns. Everything about them was okay. I think people are maybe underselling West Virginia a little bit. When I, I saw did at this the line, of the year. when I saw this line was 14 points, I, it, it, I had to do a double take. Yeah. I just couldn't believe a team that that just got beat by Wyoming was a two touchdown favorite against what I think is a really well coached team, and and they came off a win, which they weren't they weren't crazy impressive, but but that was a tough FCS team. You, you brought that up. They, they didn't just Bring in some pup to beat up. Yeah. And uh, this, this wasn't Howard, okay? No, this was like they were only a seven point favorite over James Madison. Yeah. And, they pushed and that. They number. pushed. Um, I I like this West Virginia team. I mean, it's not that I like this West Virginia team. I, I am in the tank with Neil Brown. I, I have don't been think for a long, long time. I don't think that West Virginia can do the same things that Wyoming can do because Wyoming has got girth. On the on the lines, yeah. right? They yeah. were able to push Missouri around a in a way of, that West Virginia will not A lot of mass move. that's hard to move. Yes, and West Virginia does not have that. But it's it's, just right different, now. it's a different type of offense. It's going to yeah. be a different type of offense. That's if if I had to roll one way, I'd probably roll the over. But we'll we'll figure that out in the, I, in I'm the gonna, next podcast. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna if we're picking these games, I'm gonna take West Virginia points. Army at Michigan, Michigan minus twenty two and a half at home in the Big House. Uh, it just seems like a lot of points. It does seem like a lot it of seems points. Seems like a lot Against of points. Against a real football team, not just some some pup that you bring yeah. in. This is yeah. not pay for wins. Well, and you've got Wisconsin next week on the road. You might be looking ahead a little bit. Uh, you've got you're still trying to figure out your own offense. 
There's going to be way less possessions in this game because Army likes to keep it forever. That's right. Like we saw that against Rice. They had Here's a the problem with that. play I, drive. No, I, I, I fully understand minutes. that. I do think there's some – Michigan's defense is good. Army's not going to keep the ball for 19, 19 plays, plays in, in, a, in a drive to score a touchdown. I agree. And, and if they do, they will do that once or twice because – Nobody's scoring 30 points against Michigan all year. No, That's I, just I not happening. I agree with you. Uh, however, they do take up almost the entire play clock like every yeah, time they smart. run a play. That's fine. And and it shortens the game. But it if they go like, three and out like everybody else is going three and out against well, Michigan's agreed. defense, then it don't then you take all you take twice the play clock. Agreed. You're still punting at some point in time. Here's here's the deal that it, this is why I, better teams have started to run more up-tempo stuff, right? You and I have talked about this before, but like for Alabama, Ohio State, Oklahoma to go up-tempo, when you have better players, the more plays you have, that is the more chances of you winning a play. That's right. If the game is shortened, that is less chances for your better players to win plays. Army shortens the game. It's what happened against Oklahoma last year, right? Army shortens the game. You've only got... 50 plays to play with as opposed to 100 like Boise State against True. Florida State last week. That's what Army does. They shorten up this game, that 22.5 point spread. Like Michigan could win by three touchdowns and completely dominate this game and not cover the spread. The problem is, is you compare them to Oklahoma who couldn't stop anything Agreed. last year. Agreed. And Michigan's going to get stops. Army's going to punt. Yes. They didn't punt against Oklahoma. I know. They just couldn't stop Oklahoma. They just, yeah, they couldn't but, stop Oklahoma. But Army's going to, I mean, Michigan's going to cause them to punt. I agree. I'm not comparing them to Oklahoma. I'm just rolling I'm, I'm very curious where all, because everybody I've heard is picking Army in this game. Where's the money at? 79% of the money going to Army. Give me, give me Michigan. Give me, I, I, y'all can have all those points. You can have them all. That is. Have them all. That's a lot of money coming in on, on Army. Next game up, Stanford at USC. I've got this on here. USC is a, it, well, when I wrote this down, they were a two and a half point favorite. Look up for me and tell me what uh, what they are currently as of recording time. What is it? Stanford and... Pick them. Nope. Open pick them. USC minus one. USC no. minus one. That's Vegas Insider. Let me actually go to a book. See what a book has. I got them. USC minus one. Holy. USC minus one. All right, so here's the deal. I don't think that we've gotten any firm news about KJ Costello. I don't think he's going to play this week. And, no. of course, JT Daniels is, out for, the is out for the season. So it really comes down to which freshman quarterback or which backup quarterback. I think they're both freshmen, right? Yeah, I think so. Which one do you like more? I think I like the coach more for, for Stanford. Stanford. Yeah. Yes. That's now, I, when, when we're getting into backup quarterbacks – now we're on even playing fields there. Now I'm looking at which team is going to have that guy better prepared. And you'll roll with David Shaw. I, I, I'm going to roll with David Shaw. I can believe that. I can believe that. Um, I can't believe that. I can't believe that it was a pick and it moved to you. The other way. That shocks me. Yeah, it's a little, little strange. I mean, I know they're at home, but that didn't care. Oh, never mind. 93% of the money is on Stanford. 93% of the money from Vegas Insider is on Stanford right now. And it moved from pick em to one. Now, I'm not buying that crap because they got me on South Carolina last week where all the money was on UNC and they kept making the number bigger. And yeah. so I was like, Vegas knows something. It cost me some money. Yeah. I don't know. I am, I'm saying, I am this curious. Is, this is a complete stay away. UCF. Central Florida Knights at Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic plus 10 in this game. The Fighting Lane Kiffins down in Boca Raton. We're going to break this game down with. Yep, we're going to break it down with TJ Reeves yep. from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. So make sure you jump into the Gambling Picks show. Uh, I do like this game. I think it's very interesting. It's a look-ahead spot for Central Florida. But we'll, we'll discuss some more about that later. Miami at North Carolina. This is now a four-and-a-half-point spread. It opened at a touchdown. People love Mac Brown. They love Mac Brown. He made me look bad last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
So, you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but uh yeah, I mean it, it he made he made a lot of people look bad last week. And Miami has had a week off. They got a chance here. I don't know. I mean, which which way would you lean here? What's the number four? I I'd four go with Miami. Yeah, I think I'd probably roll Miami on that. I go with Miami. I think I think they got better. I, I told you we we left that week zero game, and and I felt better about Miami leaving that game than I did Florida. Yeah, same here. I know they lost it. I felt better about them. 